Hi, my name is Deborah, and this is an edit by DH. Welcome to another video. I am so excited to be back and doing a video other than my favourite Lisa Eldridge. This is Jones's Road, and I know that it's not a new brand, but like I've explained before, I don't always like to ride on the wave of hype or trending brands or makeup products. So I was really excited to try Jones's Road. I actually you have to excuse me i purchased these products like last year sometime and it's now january 2023 so there might be more shades there might be more products in the collection for all i know but i still have quite a wide range of products to take you through it was quite a big order i have got the final product or final look on my face right now so please continue to watch to see how I created this look and my thoughts on this collection and brand. I was also very excited to try this brand for another reason because the owner of Jones's Road is Bobby Brown and it's quite interesting for me because I used to work for Bobby Brown back in the day about 10 years ago and I absolutely loved working there it taught me all the fundamentals of makeup and it taught me like what good skin was it taught me how to do the no makeup makeup look it taught me honestly all the important things that they take for granted the application of a red lip or how to do a slick eyeliner or how to make skin look like skin but actually those things although basic or fundamental are like the hardest things to achieve and that's what Bobby Brown taught me. Whilst working at Bobby Brown she was still working for the brand, it was under the SA Lauder brand, it still is, but Bobby sadly bowed out after 25 years I believe it was that she was with the brand. At the time they made it out like it was retirement, I don't want to get into the gossip of things because I'm not a gossip channel, but I believe that relationship ended because they were no longer i.e bobby brown and essay lauder were no longer on the same page but it was made to be like you know oh it was an amicable thing and bobby is just retiring and then i remember many many years back remember hearing that she might start a new makeup brand and that was ages ago and obviously if you're retiring you don't then start up a new makeup brand so i thought to myself well if she starts a new makeup brand then that's just kind of like confirms the rumours. So, I mean, I'm here for it. I think the second that you kind of sign yourself over to the big companies like Estee Lauder, L'Oreal, Shiseido, etc., you are signing away some sort of independence. You're signing away in some way, like having a say or complete say or complete control on the creative aspect and what goes into your brand and I can imagine when your name is on the brand like Bobby Brown is on the brand it must be so hard to kind of see the brand evolving without you and perhaps not going in the direction that you wanted to go so it's interesting that she's created Jones's Road because this is like all her it's an independent brand it's her brand and you know she doesn't have a big company telling her what to do or how to market her products in a certain way or which direction to go so yeah, I'm really interested to show you guys these products and hopefully you will see what I thought of it at the end and I'd lo just love to know your thoughts every step of the way. But like I said, this is the makeup look and now you will see me looking like a tramp in three, two, one. So I just want to apologise about the lighting in advance in case it starts to get gloomy. It is before midday in the UK, but the weather is a bit dodgy so i'll just apologize in advance right now i haven't got anything on other than some lashes so i am desperate to get something on my face normally if i am just doing a review on a couple of products i won't necessarily do a full face application but because jones's road includes skincare or a skincare line should i say I decided to just do a bare face and go from the beginning because I did happen to buy some of the skincare items. Right now, my skin looks better in on the camera than in real life. It's not the best just because I've been traveling. I recently returned from Singapore and the weather there was very humid and my face was producing a lot of oil. So my skin wasn't dry, it was absolutely fine. My skin was probably the best it could be. And obviously when you're in a hot country, you're drinking a lot of water. Right now, my skin is very dehydrated. 
um, I'm tired, I'm jet lagged, plus the air, the plane probably dehydrated the hell out of my skin, so it's quite dry. Anyway, so I'm looking forward to seeing what her skincare is like. I will go through each of the products step by step, starting with the skincare line. So in terms of moisturisers, they have two moisturisers from what I can see online, a light moisture cream and a miracle cream. So I got the miracle cream because I believe it is richer and obviously for drier skin types, I would highly recommend richer creams or balms. And then for oilier combination skin types, I would probably recommend the light moisture cream, although I'm not 100% sure what's in it. So this is the packaging for the cream. It's very, very simple, very simple, and just sort of very neutral colors. The cream has a little cover on it, like most skincare does. You just pull up the tab. It's got a hard top. I believe you probably have to like work it in to your skin to make it more fluid, but there's no scent to it either which is a good and bad thing. So if you like scent, then you won't be impressed with this because it has absolutely no scent. But I know a lot of people do not like fragrances in their skincare or makeup items. So this will be perfect for you. So the product description says that it's a miracle cream that delivers intense and nourishing moisture, warm with fingers, smooth all over and patting gently for plumped and refreshed skin. Ideal for super dry skin types, so like I thought, it's great for myself. How to use, break the seal, melt the miracle cream between the palms and gently press onto the face. And then Bobby's tip, because each product has a Bobby Brown tip, apply everywhere as a hydrating overnight mask. So if you wanna be hygienic, you can use a spatula. You tend to get spatulas with more high-end products that come with the jar of cream alternatively you can just buy them anyway including amazon and i noticed on the jones's website they have a spatula which they sell separately for seven pounds but i'm going to do the unholy thing and just break the seal with my finger so it says to warm it in the palm but i'm just going to warm it between my fingers so it's very rich quite thick I mean, there's no scent to it, which, like I said, is a good thing for some. But I don't know how to describe it. It's almost got a slight sour smell to it. I know sour is a trigger word for many people, like the word moist. So just to explain, the Miracle Cream is made from shea butter. It's packed with antioxidants and polyphenols. This rich plant extract calms with vitamin A and E while skin replenishing linoleic and stearic acids may help reduce the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles. Alatoin, a byproduct of uric acid that naturally occurs in the body, boosts healing. So for those of you who have sensitive skin, as with any product, skincare or makeup product, I would highly recommend that you look online for the full list of ingredients before purchasing or before committing to buying a product. So my skin feels very, very, very nourished. feels very hydrated. I quite like this cream. I think it'll be a great cream, especially for like patchy skin, very texturized, dry areas of skin. It's probably gonna be great in the winter. It doesn't feel too greasy, which is nice, but I think it gives enough slip on the skin which prepares it ready for the next stages of makeup or skincare, like foundation. Within their skincare range, they also have an eye cream, which I didn't get. I did get the lip balm, which is called the Lippy Stick Ultimate Lip Balm. 4.5 grams of product, 18 pounds. And that's, it's just one of those twist ups. Very, again, very simple packaging. It reminds me of those sweets back in the day as a child. They used to twist up and I think it was like a chalky, sweety stick. I don't know if you know, if you guys know what I'm talking about. It reminds me of that. It reminds me of a fake chalk thing that kids used to love eating and say they were eating chalk. Maybe that's just me. So this is a lip balm and it's 
it's got a really nice peppermint smell to it, uh, which I really like for lip balm particularly. It's really, really pleasant. My lips were crying out for moisture, so that was so needed. And do you know what? My husband, his lips are drier than mine. If my lips are the desert, his lips are like the Sahara, like the desert, if that makes sense. He often wears lip balm, and this is quite nice as a unisex lip balm. So I'll probably gift it to him after I've used it. But it feels very hydrating instantly. So the description says, what a lip balm should be, dense and cushiony. The lippy stick locks in moisture and protects against the elements, leaving your lips feel soft and nourished. Made with rich plant-based oils and cocoa butter in our signature scent, blend of orange, spearmint and lavender essential oils. Apologies, it's spearmint. But yeah, it's very, very nice scent, very light. It doesn't smell artificial either, if that makes sense. Like a lot of fragranced makeup or skincare smell artificial whereas i can see that i can understand they've used oils which makes a lot more sense and then needless to say apply directly to bare lips for instant moisture and protection so bobby's tip is to apply generously to lips before bed to lock in moisture while you catch some leads as americans would say or zeds as the as the british would say whilst you catch some sleep to apply this i always apply lip balm overnight because my lips are so dry especially in the winter. In terms of skincare, I also bought the cleansing stick. Now I found this method formula, I don't know what you call it, really unique and it really intrigued me. I've yet to use it and I'm obviously not going to use it on this particular video. However, I really was fascinated by the concept. So you literally, it looks like that, a roller ball and you just twist it up. It just looks like a deodorant. There's no scent to it. It did have a plastic cap on it, but I've already taken it off. So what is, what is it? Great makeup starts with clean, healthy skin. The cleansing stick is a travel-friendly solid oil cleanser that effectively dissolves makeup and removes impurities without stripping the skin of essential oils. Made with a trifecta of vitamin-rich plant-based oils, it's a low-maintenance addition to any skincare routine. So how to use it? Apply directly to dry skin and add water to emulsify. Rinse away the soft milky lather and continue with your skincare routine. And then it just says, wipe the surface of the skin stick as needed. Bobby's tip, if you have dry skin like I do, this cleanser is a game changer. Unlike harsh foaming cleansers, it doesn't strip your skin of essential moisture. So like I said, this concept just was so unique and I just really wanted to try it out. I'm actually going to take it with me on holiday and I'm really interested to see how I get on with it. And it's so like handbag and travel friendly because of the size, the fact that it's a roller, you just literally rub it on your face. You don't even need to get your hands wet if you don't want to. For example, if you use like a muslin cloth afterwards to cleanse all your makeup off. But anyway, I really like it. So I will try it on holiday because I'm going to the States this weekend. If I forget to update you guys, please give me a nudge either on the comment section below this video or over on Instagram, feel free to DM me anytime. It says the main ingredient is sunflower seed oil, so it's rich in vitamins and fatty acids. This natural plant oil helps the skin to rid itself of acne-inducing bacteria and to retain moisture. Sunflower seed oil is packed with beta carotene, a compound that converts to vitamin A and has antioxidant properties. Now, I found it really interesting that she said that great makeup starts with a clean, healthy skin. So when I used to work at Bobby and Nas, but especially at Bobby because my makeup journey properly started with Bobby. We really believed in cleansing and skincare and a good base before makeup. So it really pains me when I go with my friends to makeup counters and obviously the makeup artist there doesn't know that I know makeup or doesn't know that I have skills in applying makeup. And when they just like, my friend already might have makeup on from the day or even if they remove the makeup with like a very harsh toner, they just go straight in with the foundation. It really bugs me. It was a real bear bug of mine. And especially if they do it like insincerely, like they're not very friendly. They, you know, when that body language they give off where they feel like you're a nuisance for asking them to apply makeup on your face, i.e. their job, do their job. It just is a real bear bug of mine. So I remember going to, this is a tangent, but I remember going to a department store once with my friend, a makeup counter. It was a NARS counter actually. And my friend had asked 
the makeup artist if she could match the foundation for her. And I always like to take a step back because at the end of the day, I don't want to step on anyone's toes or come across like I'm a know-it-all. And sometimes I learn, I still learn so many things from makeup artists currently still working in the industry. But this girl just had a really poor attitude. She just acted like she couldn't be bothered. And she, the way she was applying it, I just knew that she was not only doing her job ineffectively, but I just knew she would match my friend incorrectly. So in the end, I said, do you mind if I take over? I can see that you might have other things to do. So do you mind if I just take over? And she was like, whatever. So I asked for some skincare and I full on went back into my NARS mode where I started cleansing my skin, my friend's skin properly, started applying the skincare and properly massaging it into her face and then started doing the swatches to make sure that the foundation match was correct. And in the end, I ended up gathering an audience from this makeup artist but also one or two of the other makeup artists on other counters and I didn't hear it but my friend said that she heard the girl say I think she's trying to take over my job as in me which I found quite cheeky so I did go over to her afterwards and say and by the way I'm not trying to steal your job it's just that I felt like you were quite busy so it was probably best that I just you know do it and take over and you know show my friend properly but I didn't tell her that I previously worked at NARS Perhaps I should have, but I don't think it would have changed anything. I think she would still have a very poor attitude. And it's not like it would have changed her life knowing that. So anyway, the point of me telling you that is the base is so important. And by base, I mean the skincare is so important. Loads of people are hung up over the fact, you know, like, is the foundation great? Oh, is this foundation trending? How many people are buying this? Oh, this is the latest foundation, etc., etc., etc. But really good skin starts at skincare and how you prep your face before applying foundation so i wanted to point that out then there is also something called the oil stick so i don't tend to get a lot of skincare items normally with new brands because a i'm a bit skeptical b i already have so much skincare c if something works for me i just tend to stick to it and i'm quite loyal to what works for me why change it up when it works right but the reason that I was so interested in the Joneses Road skincare is because I used to work for Bobbi Brown. And when people ask me for recommendations for skincare, I often will obviously like give them several different brands that I recommend, but Bobbi Brown's normally in the list. And when I say Bobbi Brown, so many people are surprised because they know people, most people know Bobbi Brown as a makeup brand, not so much a skincare brand. But actually I feel like the skincare at Bobbi Brown is so underrated. And imagine I used to work in Bobby Brown on like about 10 years ago, I worked at Bobby Brown. And to this day, there are still solid skincare products that there are still in their line because it works, because people repurchase over and over again. The amount of times that I recommended skincare to someone who wasn't even interested in buying skincare, that perhaps just wanted a foundation, a corrector and concealer or a lipstick, and that ended up purchasing the skincare because they could just see how effective it was, even in the short term, let alone the long term. So I know how effective Bobbi Brown skincare is. And to this day, I still use Bobbi Brown skincare, um, which is incredible because there are so many skincare brands and products I've used over the years. And that even if I initially loved, I then have changed up and switched up to something else and then stuck with that something else. However, with Bobbi Brown, I stuck to Bobbi Brown, the products that I swear by, I still swear by to this day, 10 years later. So when Bobbi Brown created Jones's Road, I knew, or at least had a feeling, because I don't know, but I have a very strong feeling that her skincare line would be brilliant because of her experience of Bobbi Brown and Estee Lauder. So going back to the product, this is the oil stick and it's on the go dewiness. It's described as a multi-purpose face oil in portable form. The oil stick is the shortcut to instantly supple skin. It glides on to moisturise with coconut alkanes and a quartet of high performance oils. So apricot, jojoba, rose hip and sunflower. So use as a spot treatment or all over. How to use. Glide directly onto the face and gently pat in for a shot of emollients. And then Bobby's tip is to fortify dry cuticles with this multi-purpose balm. So again, much like the cleansing oil, you open it up and it's that roller ball design. Again, there's no fragrance to it and it's a twist up again. 
So for me, how I would use this is I have particularly dry skin around my mouth. So whilst I'm on the go, I'd probably just like roll it onto my skin. And then like Bobby said, just pat it onto my skin. The thing is, if you're wearing makeup and you're out and about, this isn't the greatest only because it's quite oily, it's shiny. But if I really needed a touch of hydration or emollients, this is a great option. It's very handbag and travel friendly again. And I could always just do this and then just lightly powder or use one of those blotting papers lightly. Also, I think it's great as like a highlighter, just as a natural highlighter. Can you see? Just to emphasize certain areas. So I really like it. I think you could also use it as a lip balm, a lip gloss. I don't know. There's so many uses for it. So I really like that. The main ingredient as well with this oil stick is the jojoba seed oil. This antioxidant and antibacterial plant oil is rich in replenishing fatty acids, vitamins and minerals. The texture is similar to your skin's natural oils. Biomimetic is a technical term which makes it an effective hydrator for all skin types. So that's the oil stick. Continuing on the skin care road, shall we say, I also got the hippie stick. There are so many sticks, but it's great for the modern woman who is always on the go, who is always wanting that multi-purpose product, which is easy to apply, no fuss, no faff or hassle. So this is the hippie stick, which is described as skin nutrition. And again, it's a roll up balm situation. It's a universal balm that melts onto face, body and hair. So you just push it from the bottom. Like that. The only annoying thing is just to push it back down. Oh, I guess you could just use it and then anyway. So there's a universal balm that melts onto face, body, hair, and anywhere you need moisture. Hippie stick acts as a barrier against the elements, a buttery and non-draggy everywhere moisturizer that smells like bliss. This is very true. Actually, it smells quite similar to that lip balm. I can smell the oranginess, I can smell the spearmint. So how to use? Run hippie stick all over any area that needs deep moisture, hands, legs, face, elbows, fingers and heels. Bobby's tip is that the hippie stick can also be used on the heels of your feet, elbows, the ends of your hair and any other spots that need rich moisture. So what I would suggest is not to go in directly into the hair or rub it into your hair like this. When I see this, I instantly think of the body because of the size as well. So I think it's great to just like use on your body after a shower. I would love this on my legs, especially with this gorgeous, fresh, zingy scent. I would rub it on my legs and then use my hands just to like make sure it's all like sunk into my skin. And then with the residue on my hands, and maybe like if I have a bit of frizzy hair, what I often do with skincare is just sort of like, you know, pat my hair down. And that's where you could just use a little bit on the ends of your hair rather than going straight into the product with your hands, if that makes sense, because that would just instantly make your hair greasy. Also, needless to say, if your hair is naturally greasy or oily, just stay away from products like this. Love the concept of this. And again, the main ingredient in this, or the not even the main, I should say, the star ingredient is the sunflower seed oil. By the way, guys, can you see the light? It's, it's midday and it's dark. It's so dark, it's so depressing in the UK in the winter, honestly. Now, skincare is done, I'm prepped fully, I'm ready to move on to makeup. So I just kind of want to do a test of my skin. It's very bouncy and cushiony. It doesn't feel like it needs any more moisture. And you know what happens is often you'll apply a cream and then after you, you know, faff about a bit, later on you'll find that your all the skincare has sunk in but then your skin still feels a little bit dehydrated in certain areas, whereas I don't feel that with this skincare. So that's good. Let's see how we get on. I normally start with foundation, but in the past, I've had people say that they would rather I try the concealer first because they don't know how effective it is if I just apply the foundation first. So I'm taking on feedback, guys, and I, I'm showing you I do listen. So I will do things differently. I'll do the concealer first and then go on to the foundation so concealer wise it's called the face pencil and i got two shades 
because I decided that I would like a lighter set for like an under eye concealer, like a brighter one. And then I decided I wanted a more skin tone one where it just blends in with my foundation for spots. So apparently this is a bestseller. That's what it says on the Jones's Road website. So let me just show you. So these are the two shades that I got. So can you see they're slightly different tones? I got them in shade three and two. So I'll swatch it for you. Can you see? So that's shade two and that's shade three. So shade three is slightly warmer. It's got a little bit more like yellow tone in it. So that's probably the one I'll use under eye. And that's the one I'll probably use as my face concealer. But it depends because I haven't even used it. This is the problem or issue of shopping online is that, you know, you're really relying on the swatches to be accurate. So let's see. So when I look online, there's 25 shades. I know Jones's Road is sold in, well, on other retailers, but I bought directly from the Jones's Road website because it's shipped to the UK and I think it's free shipping with minimum spend of £75, so why not? And that way you're going to get all the full choice of products from the brand. So where they're selling with retailers, what I often find is that brands who sell with external retailers may give a slightly more limited selection of shades, but on the Jones's Road website, there are 25 shades. And what I really liked on their website was they have like a chart where it tells you like the numbers and then it gives you like a description of what it would be good for. So like for fair skin with neutral undertones, etc. So there's a little bit of a guide, but even then, let's face it, with online purchases, we're always taking a risk when you're trying a product or brand for the first time. So these products are described as a makeup artist dream, but simple enough for a newbie to master. Cover redness and dark spots, correct discoloration and lighten dark circles while remaining virtually undetectable. Formulated with a clear base for no chalky undertones. How to use. Start around the nose to cover redness. Next, apply around the mouth. Spot correct as needed and blend down with fingers. To create a wash of coverage, blend pencil with your favourite moisturiser and apply as a foundation. So Bobby's tip is look for the shade that disappears on your cheek and the shade that disappears on your forehead. They're not always the same. Having both on hand will keep you covered. Use a lighter shade to neutralize darkness under the eye and at the corners of the mouth. The star ingredient in here is also shea butter. So it's packed with antioxidants, etc. Normally I'm very wary of concealers that are in pencil form because I often find they drag, I often find they're drying. So it should be really interesting to apply this under my eyes. So I'm going to go in with shade number two, which is a brighter shade. Since I haven't, I don't know if they have mirrors, I'm just going to use a NARS mirror. So you can see that I, I don't have massive dark circles, just as I get older, I find my eyes get more puffy and you can see a little bit of darkness and shadow under my eye. So I like using concealer day to day because it just brightens up my under eye area, makes me look more perky. Who doesn't want to look perky? So I'll apply it to one eye first and then go from there. I'm not going too close to my under eye area. So that's, let's see. It is slightly like thicker than the concealer I would normally go with, but that's only because I go with a very light concealer. Actually, it's quite decent as a concealer. Can you see? That's with, without. With, without. And I'm really happy with the colour choice that I chose for under eyes. I mean, it's, it is emollient, I can t assure you it is, but there is a tiny bit of drag. So just bear that in mind if you don't like that dragging sensation under the eyes. But when you rub it in with your finger, there's no dragging sensation. And obviously that skincare underneath, it helps to just like blend it out. So that's the number two face pencil. Then for the foundation, I'm really nervous because I... Pfft, you know I didn't match this so 
this is shade fair now normally i'm a shade fair in most brands like la mer as well so this foundation is called what the foundation i.e wtf and it's in 12 shades from what i can see it's described as a tinted moisture balm which meets traditional foundation. It blends seamlessly into the skin, leaving you with an even fresh complexion that looks like your skin on its best day. That's a big claim, so let's see. It includes skin nourishing ingredients like jojoba oil and sodium hyaluronate, works flawlessly with the face pencil and offers medium to light medium coverage. Choose from one of 12 shades created to blend across all skin tones. WTF is a first of its kind innovation in the clean beauty space because apparently it's due to the unique formula, some shifting may occur in transit. Don't know what that means. How to use. Use your fingers or the spatula, scoop out the desired amount, apply directly to the face using a skin brush, a sponge or your fingers. For under eye darkness or blemishes that require additional coverage, the face pencil is WTF's best friend. Bobby's tip. Some people may need two shades of WTF, one for summer months, one for winter months, or a mix of both for the times in between. Yeah, I mean, generally, I would say you do need two sets of foundations for different seasons. That's not just Bobby's brand. Now, I know some of you might be enraged and be like, 12 shades in this day and age. Yeah, it's not a lot. But because it is a tinted balm, they get away with having a limited range. If it's a foundation with like a medium to full coverage, it's very unforgiving and the wrong shade will be so obvious whereas with a tinted balm that tends to like smooth out and blend in with the skin you can cover a wider range of skin tones if that makes sense and the star ingredient is sodium hyaluronate so even smaller in size than hyaluronic acid this cumectant moves more freely and deeply into the skin moisturizing and skin restoring against environmental stresses i've got the shade fair so again that's what it looks like this time it's in a glass jar it comes with a plastic cover and it always has excess. So I always like to start with the excess. Again, use the spatula for hygiene. I'm going to be really naughty and just go straight in with my fingers. Now, this is the shade Fair. Now, I know it looks quite darker than my skin, but it could work. The smell is nice. It's got some scent in it, which smells, I don't know, just smells fresh. Actually, it reminds me of the Bobbi Brown skincare, dare I say it. So let's just go in my fingers. I know it says to use, you can use a brush or whatever, but I normally apply foundation or tinted moisturizers with my fingers just to help it like really go into my skin. So how am I going to do this? So color shade wise, actually, I think it's a good match. Just kind of does seamlessly blend in with my skin. The question is, will it oxidize? Because if it's if it oxidizes and it's one of those products that oxidize, I'm in trouble. It blends in nicely. On camera, it's fine. I think in real life, it's a tad darker than I would like, as in tad darker than my natural skin tone. I know it doesn't look that like that on camera, but I'm not mad at it. As you can see, it's glowy. Obviously, the skincare underneath has helped. Like I said, the base you put on does help underneath. Let me just turn off my iPad light. But... You can see that some skin still shows through like i have a lot of redness around the center of my face i don't think that's a bad thing that your skin shows through your real skin because i normally like that kind of coverage but that's where the face pencil comes into use especially because it said in the description this is the wtf foundation's best friend so now i'm going in with shade three the slightly warmer one so this one or slightly yellowier one Let's just pray and hope that it's the right match with the foundation. And I'm gonna use it around my cheek areas and around my nose and a little bit on my chin. So, and then maybe even here, basically everywhere because it's the areas that I tend to get a lot of redness. So let me just go in. 
actually the colour's good. I'm very impressed with this colour match. Okay, so right now I look like a warrior. Now I'm just going to sort of pat it in. Because that's what I would normally do with my regular concealer. And you can see it is doing a good job of covering. You can of course add more coverage where you feel like you need it. And then just again pat it in. So it is doing a great job of neutralising all the redness. I was going to say I'm very impressed with the product so far, but I shouldn't be because this is Bobbi Brown. And I used to work for this woman's brand when she was under Estee Lauder. So I know she is capable of high calibre products. Also, I know Jones's Road has been around for a while, so it might seem like irrelevant, but as I've said on previous videos, I don't often jump on the bandwagon when something's new or trending. Sometimes I do, but very rarely. And the reason for that is because I like to kind of see how the dust settles. I like to read online a bit about the brand first, see how it gets on. And then if I'm still interested in six months, a year, whenever's time, then I try out the brand. And also by then I find that the range has normally expanded. So initially when a brand starts, unless they've got a huge amount of money where they can afford to bring out like 50 foundations and 50 concealers and 100 lipsticks and you know, a thousand eyeshadows at, this, at one time for the initial launch, which is very rare. I always find it's better to try the makeup brand once they have expanded the range. I really like this concealer. So it's interesting as well because it's not drying at all. So normally I told you I stay away from face pencil concealers, but this is fabulous. And I can see why Bobby said you can use it with a moisturiser to create more of a foundation. To be honest, I don't think you need to mix it with a moisturiser. If you use it with her products, which is already very emollient, very hydrating, very glowy, very slippy and slidey, you don't need a moisturiser. You can literally just rub it on like I have. And you can see already that it's given me a lot of coverage. And I know I applied and reapplied a few times, but honestly, it's not a lot of product. And my skin still looks like skin. Sure you guys can agree. I also want to add a bit of concealer here because I always have some darkness here. So it's good to cover up. I think this pencil will also be great for a concealer. You know, when you want to do reverse concealing, and just highlight the areas. This will be really good. I'll be really interested to see whether this brings up any texture later on in the day, because sometimes makeup can look really good when first applied, and then afterwards when it settles, when the dust settles, it starts to texturize and go patchy on the skin. So I'll be interested to see how it goes but I love that and also you will notice that it has no twist up so it is one of those sharpening tools and that's where I've bought the sharpener you guys have obviously seen a sharpener before but just wanted to show you it's one of those double sharpeners you obviously have to buy it separately um, and it's eight pounds so I'm going to continue with face since I'm on face I don't think there was a setting powder I could be wrong let me double check. Mm, no, there's no face powder. And what I should say is there is no contour either. And again, that does not surprise me. If you know Bobby Brown like I know her, good old Bobs, you will know that she hates contour. So I see that that hasn't changed. So when we used to work in Bobby Brown, I remember this was a time that the Kardashians started to become famous and contouring became really popular again. I won't say they, you know, invented contouring because they didn't. It's been around for years and years and years and decades and decades and decades back in the good old days people were contouring just with different tools and methods but they made it trendy again and i remember the amount of times that people used to ask us do you have a contour kit and we'd always say no but obviously there's different ways to contour your face you can use like a deeper color of the face pencil to contour if you must 
Also, you can use bronzers to contour your face. So we had bronzers because Bobby really liked that kind of natural sun-kissed skin look. She did and has still has, well, I say she, but what used to be her brand, Bobby Brown, still has some beautiful, really natural, some of the best bronzers on the market. So it was really easy to contour the face, but she was so anti-contouring, we used to call it the C word, literally. C word was contour, not the other bad word. So just checking her website, there's no contouring, there's no powders, so we shall just do our best with the blush. Blush, I got two blushes. One is the mm, Miracle Balm and one is the Best Blush. So I decided to go in with the Miracle Balm first. What is it? This is what it looks like. It's mahusive and that's what it looks like. There are different shades, by the way. So there are eight shades and I got the shade Eau Naturale, obviously. But the product says it's all in the name. Miracle Balm is the secret of no makeup makeup. A wash of soft focus moisture to perfect and enhance skin. A light reflecting super product that's as versatile as it's simple to use. Wear Miracle Balm alone or layer on top of foundation for an instant refresh. How to use, break the top surface of the balm with your index finger first and then warm it up to soften the formula. Apply the balm using your fingertips, palms, a brush or a sponge onto cheeks, lips or anywhere you want to tint or glow. The Miracle Balm is not intended to be used on the eyes or eyelids. Uh, Bobby's tip, genius in a pot. Once you break the seal of the balm, you can wear it alone or use it to bronze, highlight or tint the skin by mixing and matching shades. So this is au natural. I'm not expecting my face to light on fire with this shade but i wanted to get a shade let me turn off the ipad sorry whenever the ipad light is on it just dwarfs everything i just wanted a shade that i knew i would wear or be more likely to wear day to day on a regular basis without it going to waste so let me just break the seal wow this is really au natural is there even any shade to it? No, I don't even think it's going to do anything if I put it on my... I mean, a little bit. I don't know if you guys can see it. It's very much like the Moisture Balm and Cream. I mean, you can see a slight pinkiness, but if you guys don't like that balmy texture and I guess some may call it stickiness you're not gonna like this I don't mind it but what I will say is I hate wearing this sort of texture on rainy and windy days because the hair just goes and sticks to it and doesn't come off see <laughs> in hindsight maybe I should have got a deeper color but just wanted to show you I was actually gonna use this as a lip color as well but I don't think it's gonna happen because it's so natural Right, normally when you have a product that's this emollient on your face, I wouldn't go and straight with a powder because it can mess up the formula and the texture on your skin. But I'm here to break rules today, so I'm gonna go straight in with my, my blush because we need some color on this face. So this blush is originally called the best blush and there are five shades, so not many shades, but I know blush tends to work quite well on a range of skin tones. Meet Sandy. So it's a very nice colour, kind of colour that I'm always drawn to. But obviously, be warned, sometimes how it looks in the pan and how it looks on the skin, we know, don't always look the same. So it's described as Bobby's makeup secret weapon, has always been a pretty pink blush. The best blush is a silky powder formula that adds a soft natural flush or a pop of bright colour to the cheeks. Easy to use and buildable, this talc-free powder blends seamlessly into the skin to wake up the complexion. Available in five curated shades developed by Bobby to match and enhance the natural flush in a range of skin tones and it's packed in a mirror compact. How to use, smile and apply from the apple of your cheeks to your hairline using the blush brush or a wide brush. Any excess powder on the brush can be applied to the hairline and the nose for a natural look. Bobby's tip, very pale skin looks amazing with a pastel pink shade with cool tones. For skin that tans easily and rarely burns, go with a tawnier pink that has some brown tones in it. Women with tan, warm skin tones should choose an almost plum shade that looks like a rich pink when applied. 
with deeper skin tones, redder shades that have bluish tones like cranberry leave a beautiful finish. Apparently the star ingredient in this is squalene. It's an effective hydrator that helps to lock in moisture. So again, when I read the description for the blush, I it makes me smile because pre-Bobby Brown, I didn't really like to wear blush. And I know a lot of women still are very afraid of blush, which always like surprises me, but it doesn't. Even working at Bobby Brown, I remember how many women were like, oh, I don't know how I feel about blush. But then when they see the impact that blush can have, majority of women, it transforms them and changes their life on, on their opinion of blush. Because blush is that thing that instantly, it's that instant go-to product that makes you look perky and awake. What happens when our face is pale or there's one colour? We instantly look sick, right? How many times have you just put on foundation or not had makeup on and people have asked, are you unwell today? I've had that a lot, which is really annoying. And I know a lot of people would agree with me and relate to that story. But the second you apply a little bit of colour to your cheeks and lips, it just instantly gives the face life. It instantly perks up your skin and your complexion. It instantly adds youthfulness. It makes you look healthier. It makes you look like, you know, you don't want to look like Aunt Sally where you've got like two red apples on your cheeks. But, you know, when you go for like a light walk and it just instantly the blood rushes to your face, you know, your blood's pumping, circulating, and then you have that healthy slight flush. That's what you want your blush to look like, like that healthy glow, youthfulness. Who doesn't want that, right? So after that long introduction on blush, I will now apply it. So I know I've got dewy skin, but I'm going to be brave and apply this, brave or stupid. So because it's powered, I'm using a brush. And like Bobby says, smile. So what happens is, and again, this is a very, I learned this at Bobby Brown, so it's very familiar to me. If I don't smile, my face is like this. If I smile, instantly there's a lift. So say if I apply my blush now, it's here, right? If I apply my blush when it's smiling, I'm smiling, it's here. And if I drop my smile, the color is still at the high point of your face. That's where you want to apply it if you want like a lift, where you want that perkiness, the, the youthfulness, etc. However, in a few cases, circumstances, I wouldn't apply it at the centre or the apple of your cheeks just because it does make round faces look rounder, I think. That's my opinion. So there I would use it more like here. But I don't mind acknowledging or accepting that I've got a round face. So I will smile and do the bobby technique. So this is the colour Sandy. And in a way, blush can be used kind of like a contour as well. Can you see? Now, I'm just going to slightly blend it out with my finger. Why not? Because I've still got that creamy formula on my face. Can you see the difference between this side and this side? This side is like, meh, having a bad day, looking sick. This side is like, oh, hi guys, I just went for a, a nice walk and I've got a healthy flush to my face. So obviously there are five shades, but this is just one of them. And it works with the formula underneath, surprisingly. I just like to blend it out with my fingers. Not too hard so that you're disturbing the base underneath, like that. So it's really fresh. And like Bobby said, if you have remaining product, you can just apply it on your nose. Not too much, but what it does is just creates like a look where you've just sort of caught the sun a little bit on your walk. So that's the blush, which is very nice, instantly perky. You can obviously build it up, but I like a little bit of blush. Then I'm going to move on to the eyes. Now, in terms of eye products, there are some eyeshadows, I think creamy and powder. I didn't get any eyeshadow. I don't know why. Maybe none of the colours really interested me at the time. There's a mascara. There's a sparkle liquid thing. But I decided to just get the pencil and the brow pencil. So the eyeliner and the brow pencil. The pencil has been awarded Best of Beauty winner award by Allure. So that's good to know. Reassuring. So that's the pencil. Interesting with the white lid and it's in the shade brown but there are six shades in the standard black brown dark gray 
I think navy, green and purple, is the indispensable pencil apparently. A precise crisp line that glides on seamlessly and can be used with shadow on top of or by itself. Highly pigmented, this formula is based on 1970s no thrills ultra dense formulas but updated with a clean and modern ingredient stack. Blend it, smoke it, apply it as a sharp graphic liner as easy as it is effective. Then how to use it, start from the outside of your eye on the upper lash, follow the base of the lashes as close to the lash line as you can, working with your way towards your nose. When you finish, close the eye that you're working on and fill in any spots where your lid shows through. Bobby's tip, if you want to keep your look very soft, use your finger or a brush to smudge it. If you want stronger definition, create a line with a flick at the outer corner. It all depends on your personal style. Now, it doesn't mention anything about longevity, which always scares me because I have Asian eyes and Asian eyes. I'm sure, you know, you ladies out there will agree with me. Everything tends to smudge and transfer, which is a nightmare. Because again, if you're that modern woman that wants no faff and just want to put on your makeup in the morning and not really touch it up during the day, smudgy eyeliners are the worst nightmare. So I'd be interested to see how it applies. So eyeliners, I'm really not fussed whether I use a pencil, a liquid, a gel, as long as it stays, I do not discriminate. And I am a huge eyeliner person to the point where it'll be definitely one of my desert island products because I feel like it makes such a huge difference to the eyes. Obviously, I've only got lashes on right now and lashes make a huge difference, but only if they're lash extensions rather than mascara for Asian eyes anyway. And yes, the lashes alone are nice, you don't necessarily need a liner, but generally I'm a hardcore liner fan. So let me just see what it's like. Now, Bobby said to start from the outer and work your way in. I work differently, especially when you've got fake lashes on. So that's a brown, by the way, very dark standard matte brown. If you want to create a sharp line, but you don't have the confidence to do it, I would use those really thin ear eye buds or Q-tips as you Americans call it. I've got these tiny things that I got from Korea. And then they just easily clean up to create a nice eye look. Obviously you can use the sharpener to create a point but I feel like it's such a waste of product because right now there's still so much product left right but you just don't have the point if you sharpen it you're losing way more product and you'll go through your pencil way quicker than you would by not sharpening it so I think it's just easier to do this If you're somebody that hates faffy products and you're worried about or not good at applying liner or you think you're not good at applying liner, this kind of product could still work even though it's not the easiest to use as an eyeliner for a precise eyeliner. I would say just do an eyeliner, use this to sweep up and clean up. That's your line already like done easy and that's if you like a little wing and then on the top you could just use a tiny brush to blend it out then that will instantly give you a straight line if that makes sense and it's super easy to do so i'm going to keep this on and i will yeah do a check in later on next i'm going to show you the brow pencil this brow pencil is very interesting because when you see brow pencils you're so used to them being really thin and then the nib or pencil inside being even thinner. But this is a very thick pencil, as you can see. But the point is on point. So the brow pencil, it comes in five shades and I got shade brunette. So that's the shade, sort of like a cool brown, which is exactly what you want. So that's the cool brown brow pencil and that's the eyeliner I just applied. So, more brow with less work, this smooth, controllable pencil integrates tiny hair-like fibres to add dimension and fullness, use it to achieve fluffy and feathery brows to extend and define, or just to fill in bare patches. Totally waterproof. 
How to use. Use the tip of the pencil in light upward strokes for precise definition or to fill in and thicken when needed. Use a slanted brow brush to help fill in and spoolie to brush up and diffuse. So obviously you'll need to either buy that separately or use one that you currently have. Bobby's tip. I love to use every little bit of eyebrow hair that grows naturally, adding the brow pencil in key places. Filling in the top of the brow arch adds lift, adding strokes to the inner edge of the brow frames the eye. Also great for extending the outside tip of the brow. Now I know that Bobby was a strong believer in doing brows properly because it absolutely frames the eye. It instantly can be like an instant facelift. So my brows, they haven't got any product on. I'm just going to give them a brush with a spoolie. Then I'm just going to follow Bobby's advice. So that's one that I've done and that's not. I mean, you probably won't see much of a difference other than this brow has got more gaps and this doesn't. To be honest, I can't see it creating tiny like hairs, but I do really like the colour. So I think it's a good filler in product rather than like good for creating really thin lines, if that makes sense. Or thin brow like hair. Overall though, I would say it's a very good colour. Again, it looks darker on camera than it does in real life, but it's not a bad product. I don't hate it, it's, it's not bad. In terms of lips, again, there's so many products like a lip tint, a lip and cheek stick, a gloss. I don't know why I didn't buy any of those. I think it's just because I thought the Miracle Balm would be more miracle-y and I could use this colour and I didn't realise it was so like, so natural so i'm just going to quickly apply a different lip product and just powder my face a little bit before giving you my final thoughts so i've just added a lip color which isn't jones's road i've powdered my face so you can see it's quite mattified now so what i might do is just quickly go in with my oil stick and just add a bit more glow back to the skin just in the places where I like it. Like so. Who needs a highlighter? And actually a glow using oil looks more natural than most highlighters which tend to have like a shimmery pigment or pearl pigment to it. So yeah, that is the final look. My thoughts, I am really impressed with her products overall and her range. I think it's a lovely brand that's just one of those like your staple go-to makeup brand that you can go to for makeup that you can rely upon, that has good ingredients, that does what it says on the tin, that is, you know, kind of guilt-free products if that makes sense. It, there's no frills and thrills to it, which I don't think is a bad thing because there are many makeup products where they're very gimmicky or they're very show-offy, but you know, you, you initially get wowed by it and after a while you're like boring. Whereas this is a kind of makeup where you can use absolutely day to day and can absolutely fit into really well into your, your existing makeup bag or collection. So I really appreciate it for what it is. When I look at my skin now that I've finished, my foundation still feels really hydrated. My skin feels hydrated, should I say. There's no patchiness and I'm still really pleased with the colour. My only concern is that, you know, patchiness could appear later on in the day, the longevity of this eye pencil. So I will try to do a check in later to see what it looks like, see how well it's lasted. But this is the final look. So I hope you guys really, really like this video. Let me know if you've tried Jones's Road before, what you think of it. And if you have it, what are your favourite products? And I hope to see you on the next video. But thank you so, so much for watching. Take care of yourselves. So I just wanted to do a check-in of my makeup, as promised. I haven't touched anything up, by the way. My skin, the base is still looking okay. Obviously, it's a little bit oilier now because I always get oily and I haven't touched it up. There's no texture on my skin, which is great is a good sign i normally get texture and then my 
eyes, they are a bit smudgy, like just over here and underneath. Now, I've been mainly at home since I last did the video, which was like however many hours ago, six hours ago. I've mainly been at home, but I know that if I applied this in the morning and I was out and about, I feel like it would have smudged more. So even the fact that there's a slight like transfer underneath is not great. It's one of those eyeliners that I probably would save for like if I were to just pop to the supermarket and I need a liner. But if I knew I had a long day ahead, like of work, being out and about with friends, etc., I definitely wouldn't wear this because I hate when my eyeliner smudges. Overall, I think my makeup still looks fine, a bit shiny, but otherwise I look fine and I'm still very happy with the base. So yeah. That's my check-in. I hope you enjoyed.